Whoever has ears, all right, some of you remembered from last week. If you weren't here last week, if you hear whoever has ears, your mandatory response is let them hear. So welcome everybody to worship here this morning. Uh, it is beautiful out this morning. Uh, it is nice seeing the green on the trees and uh, it's been a little cool, but we'll take it because we have sunshine. I like sunshine. Uh, when the dark and the gray and the gloomy is gone, that is always uh, wonderful. So we welcome you, whether you are here with us via live stream or whether you are here in person, it is a joy uh, to have you with us. So we are going to begin with some announcements. So Diane uh, will go over our announcements with us and then lead us into the call to worship. Uh, so please prepare your hearts. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. This morning, if you have any joys or concerns, please send them to Pastor Scott via email or text, or you can call the prayer chain. Sunday school has been meeting and will continue to meet at 9 o'clock in the McWhorter room. Everyone is welcome. Please attend. Uh, Wednesday night community prayer. Be on the lookout for in your emails um, for Pastor Scott's um, uh, message. He sends one every week with the prayer attached. Uh, so it's at seven o'clock on Wednesday. So um, watch for that and please join in. And there's also cards out on one of the little lectern tables in the uh, narthex there. Uh, if you've lost or misplaced your Wednesday night prayer card, we have wallet size, business card size ones you can put in your in your wallet or we've got larger print ones a little easier to read you can keep on the refrigerator but if you just set some kind of reminder or notice to join us because it is powerful if the more people we have praying the same prayer at the same time every week it becomes more powerful and more impactful so don't forget about that and like diane says i send out or try to send out a reminder every week it'll also be on our facebook page every week uh so other than just making some kind of reminder for yourself, there's little excuse not to join us for that. But uh, just read through that prayer and know that others are praying with you uh, and just, just have the right heart and the right intent and it'll be powerful for all of us. Thank you. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? All right, with that, let us join in worship. Please stand and join us as Diane leads us in the call to worship. You come to the help of those who gladly do right. You come to the help of those who remember your ways. You, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Heavenly Father, as we continue to study the words that your Son taught us through the parables, Lord, just allow us to open our hearts and our minds and our souls to you today. Allow us to be open for the word that you will enrich us with today. And Lord, whether that be through music or song, whether that be through your Holy Scripture or even the words that you have given me, uh, allow people to receive the bread of life that you have given to them so that they may be nourished, so that they may be equipped and so that they may be ready to serve you. All of this we ask and pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join us now in our opening hymn, hymn number 419, I Am Thine, O Lord, verses 1, 2, and 4. Close. 
we come to our time of joys and concerns, um, um, I think most of you may have heard already the passing of Irma Swartz. Um, if you want to know who Irma was, look at Shirley, and then look just to this way, and there's an empty spot. That's Irma. And I hate to refer to somebody as an empty spot, but we know each other by face and by, oh yeah, I remember. Uh, but Irma... Uh, was originally from Metamora, and when uh, her husband passed away, she sold a farm, bought a condo here, and she's been part of this community. She's been a part of the community long enough that she's in the old directory. So she's been a part of this church for a long time, just a wonderful, quiet woman. Um, there will be a service tomorrow at Phillips and Myers Funeral Home. Uh, visitation is at 10, a service at 11 with a graveside service following. So that's Phillips and Myers in Brookville, Indiana. Um, um, we also um, uh, had some addition prayers this week. Uh, prayers for Curtis. Uh, I don't know how to spell that. Keith? Keith? Keithy. Uh, Curtis Keithy, Martha's uncle, uh, is having kidney failure at age 91. So be in prayer for that. And uh, pray for Martha. Uh, Friday, she is going to have what is called a cervical disectomy slash fusion surgery on Friday. Uh, so basically, they're going to be tinkering with her neck, but they have to tinker on her neck through her throat. Um, and they're considering it routine surgery, uh, but one of the possible side effects is it can affect your voice. And that is disturbing for someone who's connection to God is through her voice. So just be in prayers for Martha. She is very stressed, very concerned. Uh, so just, just give her prayers of comfort. Uh, and of course, be in prayers for um, all of the staff that will be attending to her that day uh, and that things uh, will uh, go on. Um, so those are the ones that I'm aware of right now. Oh, Sylvia. Um, Sylvia's hospice treatment is going to be moved out of the Cincinnati Hospice facility, and she is going to be moved back home uh, to continue her hospice care there. She is in a state right now uh, that is classic Sylvia. And if you know Sylvia, that says enough. Um, she is very alert, very aware of her surroundings, very cognitive, and she's very insistent that she re be returned home and that, if it hasn't already happened, be happening, happening within a couple of days here. Uh, but uh, just continue for prayers, uh, because it's not only hard for Sylvia, but it's hard on a lot of people who've loved and taken care of her, uh, because the concern is that she's going to have another fall um, and another uh, injury or something that's just going to uh, uh, be hard. Um, so they're working on getting 24 care for her, but we don't know if that's going to be available. So just continue to pray for that situation uh, on that. Do we have additional joys and concerns to share today? Carla. Joy. I found out last weekend that my youngest niece is pregnant. 
pregnant with their first child. And he, he or she is due in October. So that was a, quite a joy. They had tried and had some, some challenges. So we're hoping and praying that this one goes so without issue. Carla's niece, um, uh, they've had uh, been trying to, for several years now, have been trying to have a child. And uh, uh, we found out this past weekend that uh, she is indeed pregnant and far enough off along that, to share with, with us. So uh, that is definitely a, uh, a joy for us. Um, and her niece's name is Ashley. So we can lift to God up and thankful, be thankful for Ashley and Dan, uh, just a one, wonderful couple. Uh, yes, Pat. So Pat's niece, Brittany, prayers for her. And Danny, uh, 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 Danny's Brittany is struggling right now with some serious issues. Um, and uh, it's a very difficult time for her and for the family. Uh, so just continue to remember uh, them in your prayers. Um, it was a very serious uh, situation. Um, and so just be in prayers as, as uh, that situation goes on. And it's just not, uh, um, it's multifaceted and difficult problem. So just be in prayers uh, for that uh, at this time. Are there any others? All right, with that, let us be in prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Wonderful and gracious Father, first of all, we've come here to honor and praise you. Uh, we've come here because you have called us to be here. Uh, we have come here uh, to seek you, to be with you, and to be with one another. And Lord, through this body of Christ that we call the church, uh, when we come together and we function as we should, we, we definitely see your glory. And Lord, as we come together as your church body, uh, we just celebrate the many joys that you have given us. There are many blessings that you continue to give us, uh, many uh, wonderful things in relationships, many, many wonderful things that we share with our families. Uh, but we just give you thanks and praise for the joys that are in our life. But Lord, we thank you that you're also a gracious and loving God. And not only do you expect us to come and worship, but you expect us to come and bring our petitions to you. You have called us to be in prayer to you, to take our needs and our concerns. And Lord, we have some people that are in just great need of comfort and peace and love. We have people that are struggling in darkness. We have people who are struggling in fear. We have people that are, are paralyzed by the situations that they're in. We have people who are grieving. Uh, we have people who have experienced great loss. And Lord, um, uh, you know their hearts and you know our hearts. Lord, uh, provide not only them with a measure of comfort, but provide us with the wisdom and the encouragement to bring your love to them through us. Uh, allow them to know uh, that, they, that you are a loving God and that through us uh, we can introduce them to that love. Lord, just be with this church as we continue uh, to navigate uh, coming out of COVID, as we continue to navigate moving forward to seek your will and to always be the church that you have called us to be. And Lord, as we learn in, uh, from your son, Jesus Christ, uh, we remember the words that he taught us in this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now Diana will bring us our scripture readings for today. Our readings today are from Isaiah 28, verses 24 through 29, and Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9, and 18 through 23. Isaiah. 
When a farmer plows for planting, does he plow continually? Does he keep on breaking up and working the soil? When he has leveled the surface, does he not sow caraway and scatter cumin? Does he not plant wheat in its place, barley in its plot, and spelt in its field? His God instructs him and teaches him the right way. Caraway is not threshed with the sledge, nor is the wheel of a cart rolled over cumin. Caraway is beaten out with a rod and cumin with a stick. Grain must be ground to make bread, so one does not go on threshing it forever. The wheels of a threshing cart may be rolled over it, but one does not use horses to grind grain. All this also comes from the Lord Almighty, whose plan is wonderful, whose wisdom is magnificent. Now for Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times that was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom that does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts of tithes and offering. Lord, we thank you for those who have produced this crop, who have produced this fruit to give to you. Lord, you have given us many blessings, and we give to you just a part of those blessings back in return. And Lord, out of these gifts, may we plant more seeds and may we produce more fruit. May we always be the church that you have called us to be. All of this we ask and pray in the name of the Son, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you would, please remain standing. We're going to sing a classic United Brethren hymnal hymn called Bringing in the Sheaves.
created. Whoever has ears, welcome to our second week of our parable series. Uh, we're calling Story Time with Jesus, and, um, and I pray that, that as you come to church, and before you even come, that you pray to God to open your hearts, open your ears, so that you truly hear and experience what God has for you. Have you ever known somebody that is full of useless information? Apparently so. <laughs> somebody that seems to know a lot about nothing. Well, here are several useless facts from the website 50 Useless Facts. Did you know that most American car horns honk in the key of F? <laughs> Life-changing, right? Barbie's full name is Barbara Millicent Roberts. Some of you may have known that, but I had no clue she had a name other than Barbie. Here's an interesting fact. There's more Monopoly money is printed in a year than real money is printed throughout the world. Some may argue about that this past year. Did you know the plastic things on the end of your shoelaces are called aglets? Carla's shaking her head. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> wow, my life is better now. I know that, right? Did you know that the average person spends six months of their life sitting at red lights? I think Kay would argue about that on Harrison Avenue, right? <laughs> we had a little discussion about the fun traffic on there now. But, but think about all these facts I just gave you. None of them were life-changing. None of them will dramatically impact your life any, in any way. Okay, well, maybe if you were a finalist on Jeopardy and the final question was about aglets or something, but, uh, but otherwise, it's just useless information. Now, some of it was interesting, maybe thought-provoking or entertaining, but isn't that how we treat God's Word? How we treat worship? Oh, that was an interesting sermon. Oh, that was a thought-provoking passage she read. Oh, wasn't that service entertaining today? And if you just come here for you, then the word that you hear will be just interesting, thought-provoking, or entertaining. But if you come here for God, if you come here seeking the truth in God's word, then it should be life-changing. As I mentioned last week, God's Word is designed to feed you, to edify you. Sometimes it'll bring you comfort. Sometimes it brings you conviction. Sometimes it provides you assurance. Sometimes God's Word is a call to action, a call for growth, and a call for change. So I want you to open your ears and hear the first half of this parable again. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many, many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, kind of listening, right? I think we've all been around planting gardens or trying to grow grass. It's not usually very effective unless you do all the prep work and the work of watering, the work of weeding. It takes a lot of work to make things grow. 
So on the surface, we get this metaphor, right? But as usual, after speaking in parables, Jesus goes on to tell people what he meant. He says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. Think about a walking path. A walking path is hardened and packed down. And because it's packed down, the seed doesn't really grow good there, does it? And if the seed is thrown on that ground where it's hard and it can't grow and take root, either a bird snatches up that seed or the, the, the small plant gets trampled very easily. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people do not hear or understand God's word. And often it is sin that has hardened their hearts. It is sin that has packed it down and there are things that have trampled over it. In Hebrews chapter 3, he says, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. You and I have an obligation to first get rid of the sin that's in our lives so that we are not hardened to God's Word. Because God's Word cannot take root in us. It will fail if we have sin or other things that are not allowing God's Word to take root. And we also have an obligation, as the Scripture tells us, to hold each other accountable to recognize when our fellow Christians are not hearing or responding to God's word. Because the true measure of a Christian is not what you hear or what you say you believe, but it's about the fruit that your life is producing. And when we see people around us who are not producing fruit, then it is our job as Christians to pull them together and, and, and help them cultivate what needs to happen so that God's word can grow in them. And then Jesus continues, the seed following on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the, way, because of the word, they quickly fall away. And this is what I was mentioning before. You can't come here and just simply enjoy a good service. You need to let God's word take root. You need to respond to the word of God as he places it in your heart. Because you can walk out of here and say, that was a great sermon, pastor. And then next week you come back and nothing's changed. Or maybe for a moment you're going to say, wow, that was great. I should be doing more of God's word tomorrow. I'm going to start reading my Bible. And the alarm clock goes off on Monday and you go, maybe Tuesday I'll start maybe Thursday I'll start. And then you come back on Sunday and go, oh yeah, I was going to start that Bible thing again. We'll do it Monday, right? And start all over again. Colossians 3 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. The word dwell means that it is deep in your hearts. See, God's word is not just for casual appreciation. We can all open it up and skim through and read a whole chapter right now. But we're supposed to let God's word dwell. We're supposed to read it. We're supposed to chew on it. We're supposed to be nourished by it. We're supposed to think about it. We're supposed to let God's word work inside of us. And we are to help each other grow. And the scripture says we are to teach and admonish each other. Again, we are called to hold each other accountable. Brother, are you living by God's word? Sister, I see you doing this. Are you living by God's word? And as we continue in the parable, we see this. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, 
but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So doesn't this sound like our world today? We were just talking about that in Sunday school class today, that we get so consumed with worldly things and where we have to be and what we have to do that we forget about the power of God's Word. And this past year with COVID and restrictions and the election, we have seen how consumed and worried that we as Christians can become about all kinds of stuff. And we have allowed circumstances of the world to choke out our faith to choke out our joy, to choke out our mission. And this is what Jesus taught us earlier in Matthew. He said, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? We cannot continue to allow the world to dictate our lives. We know ultimately that we have victory in Christ. You see, our worry should be replaced by glory. We should be a joyful people in all situations, no matter what's going on around us. And Jesus goes on to tell us how ideally we should live. He said, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. It takes a lot of work to have a good garden, doesn't it? And like a good garden, there are times we need our lives turned over. We need to have someone pull the weeds. And sometimes we need fertilizer. And some fertilizer isn't very pleasant, is it? I remember my dad used to drive and get a pickup truck load of manure every year for his garden. And I had to help shovel and spread that manure. It wasn't pleasant, but it enriched the soil. When the plants were rooted in that rich soil, when we had the conditions just right, when the garden was tilled, when everything was right, when we had the right amount of water and everything, the plants flourished. And there are times in our lives when things seem like they're being upset and turned upside down. There are times when God is trying to feed us with things we don't want to hear. So sometimes the truth stinks. Sometimes the truth is not very palatable. I've had people tell me after sermons, I don't like what you said. Yeah, and <laughs> not my words. It's God's word. We're going over God's scripture. It's the truth, and sometimes we don't like it. It stinks. But when we allow the truth to be worked into us, then we become healthy soil. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I think those are some pretty nice words from Isaiah, aren't they? It's a beautiful passage. Hear these words. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. 
It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. If you want to be blessed, if you want to grow in your faith, if you want to bear fruit, then you need to cultivate your hearts every week. You need to prepare your heart to receive God's word. You need to receive the truth that he has for you. And as God nourishes you, you will see your life change as you grow closer to God. We cannot be a people of fear anymore. We cannot be a people that worries about what's going on in politics and worried about this and worried about that and arguing over this and arguing over that. We get consumed and we get angry and we get fearful and we stop producing fruit. And God says, when you've got your roots in me, even in the toughest times, even in the scariest moments, even when things all seem wrong, you should be standing tall. Your leaves should be green, and there should be fruit bearing out of your life. You see, we can't just be hearers anymore. We can't just say, oh, that's nice. They say a lot of good things at that church. Saying good things is one thing. Living it is another. We have to grow and be fruitful. And our roots need to be deep within God. Whoever has ears, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has given us some very clear and simple words today. Lord, we thank you for what he has taught us through this parable. Lord, let us be a people that doesn't just receive the seed. We allow the seed to be cultivated. We allow the seed to grow deep roots, and we allow the seed to produce fruit. Lord, you have said that if we are faithful, and that if our faith is true and genuine in you, that you will produce fruit up to a hundred times. And Lord, we've been stagnant for way too long. Lord, allow us to start changing and growing in the way that you have called us to be. Allow us to be the people that truly live for Jesus Christ. All of this we pray in your son's name. Amen. Let us join now in our closing hymn. It is out of the faith we sing, the small hymnal, number 2149. And it will also be on the screen as well. Thank you.
You'll never know the power of God's Word until you let the God's Word take root in your soul. You've got to be open to change. You've got to be willing to change. I'm here to tell you, none of us are okay. We're all messed up people. And if you're not one, come to my office and tell me how to be one. But the truth is, if you allow God's Word to dwell within you, it corrects that messed up person. He'll turn your soil. He'll plant good seeds, and you will grow in Christ. Your roots will grow deep, and no matter how strong the wind is, you will stand tall. No matter how long the drought of life is, your roots will draw from the waters of the living God. And all the while, our faith will produce fruit. We've seen some fruit grow. But God says if we really believe that He will multiply us by 30s, 50s, and even 100s, do you imagine what God will do when we let Him do His work? When we let His Word dwell richly in our hearts? When we come here seeking God's will? When we come here seeking His truth? And when we come here with a willing heart to change as He directed, no matter how bad that fertilizer tastes, no matter how hard He has to work us, knowing that we're going to come out stronger and better and healthier. Let us go now and be God's people. Let us let our roots grow deep and let us be bright, firm, and beautiful to the world and allow us to go and produce the fruit that he has called us to produce. Go now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.